This had better be the lot. It's a skiff. What ways need to be Sid. have told me the gentleman who visited earlier, the one with the loud voice, was your uncle. I did think there was a resemblance. Something in the eyes. Gav told me the gentleman who visited earlier, the one with the loud voice, was your uncle. I did think there was a resemblance. Something in the eyes. The sun hath taught the mountain It will come to the morning and fears of night. Goodbye. Ivan's <laughs> newest dish, is it? The nobleman who visited. Was that his? And what can I do for you? Come again. Oh, don't. Oh, Not come much on, Pipe. Way. I was hoping you'd be back soon. Well, come on, Clive. I was hoping you'd be back soon. Clive. What's saying for you, dear? Last you a good while. My best work, but it'll do. You can thank me later. state of our coffers is anything to go by. Seen troops amassing at every border crossing. No surprises there. How are you doing? Quick look. Think you can help? Welcome to the patron's whisper. Your benefactors are a generous lot. Best of luck out there, Sid. I see you're still largely intact. It went well then, I take it. Ah, I see you're still largely intact. It went well. started reading books that don't have any pictures in. I have done it, Sid. I have learned all the letters. Every one. I have done it, Sid. I have learned all the letters. 
I knew it was a good idea to have editors study alongside the children. It's really stoked their competitive spirit. I knew it was a good idea to have editors study alongside them. your death sleeping out here. And I hear you've been busy making friends, Sid. Your predecessor had the same idea. Why, he even extended the hand of friendship to me. Not once, but twice. I hear you've been busy making friends. I think Mid might need some help. When it comes to boyish charm, Goops has an indomitable rival in Gal. One is the sweet little babe in arms to be cooed over, the other the naughty little boy who pull on my pigtails. When it comes to boyish charm, Goops has an indomitable rival. Clive, you're back. I am. And with glad tidings for once. Hugo Kupka is no more. Well, I'll be. All of our comrades who lost their lives back at Sid's place be smiling down at you right now. We had a stallus from Lubor saying Drake's fang had fallen. I expect that was your doing as well, was it? It's... it's a long story. One for the history books, I'll bet. Welcome home, Clive. It's good to be back. You look better. I feel it. Which means I'm coming on your next little adventure. You're not leaving me behind again. Wouldn't dream of it. Otto. Any... Uh word on the royalist movements since I've been away. Shouldn't you be putting your feet up? <sighs> if you really want to know, go and have a word with Vivian. Thank you. I will. It's good to have you back. I was worried. It's good to have you back. I was worried. If you're desperate to know more about Walloon, Vivian's your girl. But if I were you, I'd be heading straight to my bed. If you're desperate... Not bad for a boy from the Imperial Barracks, eh? Not bad for a boy from the Imperial Barracks, eh? Ah, the conquering hero returns. And with hardly a scratch on him. I may have picked up one or two. <laughs> well, the fact that you came straight to me instead of visiting our resident Physica suggests that you picked up something more important. A scent. The scent of Waluda's. The very same. But whatever plans Kupka was hatching with the Royalists, he took them to his grave, as did his men, slaughtered by the Orcs who'd taken over the Fang. Orcs, Vivian. I've never seen such creatures in Storm before. The Waluders must have ferried them over from Ash, but why? Why work to rescue Kupka only to invade his home, the Mother Crystal of an allied nation, and let both fall? 
It makes no sense. Do you know the tale of the blind men and the adamantus? One can often be led astray by focusing too closely on individual details. One must instead see the bigger picture. And what bigger picture is there than my map? The Kingdom of Walud claims dominion over all of Ash. It is a nation forged by the bloody conquest of Barnabas Tharm, the dominant of Odin, the Canvarian War of Independence in 849, the Battle of the Twin Realms in 865, the Battle of Belinus Tor in 873. Wheresoever his armies fought, Odin was found where the fighting was fiercest. But of late, the warrior king appears to have laid his sword to rest. Battle rages for control of the crystalline dominion. Yet Tharm sends not a single ship in support of his Dalmechian allies. Meanwhile, the Blight ravages great swathes of ash. Yet warlike Walud shows not the faintest interest in laying claim to untouched lands. So why go to the trouble of sending an army of orcs into the heart of Drake's Fang? Only to make no attempt to claim the Mother Crystal for Walud. It can hardly be for lack of men. Tharm's armies rival any in the Twins. No. We have not seen the last of the Walud standard. Odin will ride again. It is but a question of when. And on that day, who will be trampled underfoot? In summary, I know not to what end the Royalist betrayed Kukka. I know only that it is part of some broader scheme. A scheme tied to the ambitions of one man. King Barnabas. But there is no need to wallow in confusion. If one is to cure a sickness, one must first identify the symptoms. And your Lord Uncle has volunteered to do just that by keeping an eye on the Royalists' movements. <laughs> He's really throwing himself into this. <laughs> Indeed he is. Which means all that remains for us to do is await his reports. Well, not quite all in your case. The people of the hideaway must hear the news. Justice has been done. Hugo Kupka is dead. The wounds he left that night are still raw. Especially for those who lived with Sid the longest. Tell them that those wounds might finally begin to heal. Consider it the price of today's instruction. I've never known you to be sentimental. <laughs> what can I say? I am only human. And we are... All of us, sentimental animals at heart. I suppose we are. Very well. I'll go and spread the word. And how may I assist you today? So what if it's Parliament? Which leaves but one man. <sighs> Hippocrates, Blackthorn, Karen. For veterans such as these, Sid's hideaway was a sacred refuge. Kupka took something from them. And now you have avenged that loss. They should be the first to hear the happy news. have told me the gentleman who visited earlier, the one with the loud voice, was your uncle. I didn't think there was a resemblance. It's good to have you back. I was worried. It's good to have you back.
Ah, Clive. Have you come seeking the gift of knowledge? No. To share mine, actually. Hugo Cooker is dead. He... Oh, my. Can it really be true? <laughs> Look, he's crying. <laughs> he is. The big baby. <laughs> and with good reason, children. These are tears of joy. We must offer up a prayer to your parents that the heavens might weep with us. There shall be no lessons today, only thanksgiving and merrymaking. Go, put away your things. All right. Brilliant. Finally, a new dawn has broken. It has. Thank you, Clive. I cannot wait to share the good news. Hippocrates. After Kuka fell, Ultima came to me. I need to know what he is. Have you learned anything? Alas, no. And not for want of trying. I have scoured nigh every historical tome in our collection and found nothing. Not even the sort of conspicuous absence that might suggest a concealment of fact. One is almost tempted to conclude that such a creature never existed. But I saw him with my own eyes. I don't doubt that you did. Alas, it seems you are the only one who has. To others, he reveals naught. We see only that which he leaves in his wake, like some terrible force of nature beyond the ken of mortal man. A brother of death. Whether the Ultima you met with was the being itself, or merely another projection of its power, I know not. But until I do, my investigations shall continue. Thank you. It means a lot. Is there something I might assist you with, Clive? I have said it many times. His story is ended. Were you aware... But what of the twins themselves? Yes, change will come. I have compiled some new entries, if you would like to see them. If you have a question for me, I should be happy to answer it. You are always welcome, Clive. Well, someone looks pleased with himself. It's true what I'm hearing, then. Nothing escapes you, Lady Karen. It's true. Cooper is dead. Hmm. No more looking over our shoulders, then. Good. I'm starting to get a crick in my neck. Don't let it go to your head, though. Is it business? Or pleasure? It's a relief. Thank you, Clive. Go on, then. It'd better I'll be here.
Is that all? Blackthorn, do you have a moment? What is it? I'm busy. I wanted to tell you that Hugo Kukra is dead. Also has anything else for me. Back are ya? Do a bloody rudence. Not included. The same for you, dear. Not bad. If I do say so myself. Materials, and I'll think about it. And well, don't just stand there gawping. It's better I'll be here. Saying for you, dear. Not my best work, but it'll do. you back. I heard it from Otto's own lips. Hugo Kutka is dead. We're seeing troops amassing at every border crossing. Oh, no, sir. You barely sat down since you came home. Vivian got you running errands or something. Just spreading the word. So, the Professor's got a soft side, has she? I'd never have guessed. No. She was right, though. Everyone was glad to hear the news. Ah, oh, but you ain't told everyone. I can think of plenty of friends back at the old hideaway who'd sleep more peacefully for knowing. Not least of all Sid. You should tell him. Hmm. You're right. I should. And I will. Well, when you do, be sure to take Mid with you. She's been going at it hammer and tongue down at that workshop of hers, trying to do her father proud. But I can't remember the last time she visited the old Salt's grave. Very well. I'll suggest it. Don't think Mid's been to visit her old man's grave in years. So take her with you when you go. Let Sid see his daughter's face. If he can recognize it under all the grime. Don't think Mid's been to visit her old man's grave in years. So fancy a look at the list, do you? It was luck, and luck alone. 
for now. Thank you, Clive. Here you go. Seen enough? I know what you're going to tell me. Thank you, Clive. Thank you. I know what you're going to tell me. Thank you. When it comes to boyish charm, Goops has an indomitable Reading. I knew it was a good idea to have editors study alongside the children. I have done it, Sid. I have learned all the letters. your death sleeping out here. I hear you've been busy making friends. If I don't come up with something soon. All right, Clive? What do you want? I'm going to visit Sid. And I thought you might like to come with me. Sorry, I'm too busy for all that right now. I've got to get this thermal displacement stack sorted. Thermal... <laughs> displacement stack. Here. And uh, this is for... Only the fastest, finest ship the world has ever seen. The Enterprise. Me and my dad designed it together. Where other vessels rely on the fickle winds to drive them through the water, ours is fitted with mithril engines. And those things have got more push than a behemoth in a bad mood, and more heat than all the hells put together. Which is where the stack comes in. I may have already talked some tight-lipped shipwrights into putting the hull together for me in a little dockyard in Canva. But the stack's a bit more involved, so I'm building it here. Thing is, it's so involved that I'm running behind, and it's starting to hold things up over at the shipyard. I'll come and see my dad, though, when I'm done. Whenever that is. <sighs> is there anything I can do to help? Good old Clive. I were hoping you'd say that. First things first, I need some parts making. The sack will be made up of three major components. There's the plate in, here. That channels hot vapors away from the engine. The helm over the top, that disperses all that heat into the air. And the shielding around the sides, that stops the rest of the ship from going up in flames. A full suit of armor, then. Probably best to take it one piece at a time. Then you'll need to start with the plating. Everything else fits onto it. I've got the designs and the list of materials here. Show these to Blackthorn. He'll know what to do. I can't make it not tell of them. Luckily, you don't need to. The engine plating's basically just a very efficient conductor. Create a thermal gradient across it and the heat radiates outwards, which... You know what, just show the plans to Blackthorn. He'll know what to do. The engine plating's basically just a very efficient conductor. Bastard shadow loomed over us all for far too long. Thanks for snuffing him out, Clive. That bastard shadow loomed over us all for far too long. 
Hugo Kupka's dead, isn't he? We don't have to live in fear of him anymore. Hugo Kupka's dead, isn't he? Good to have you back. Though her ships lie still in harbor, her soul sails on the main. The breath of ages at her back, adventure in her veins. Though her ship lies still in harbor. Heard what you told Nan about Kupka. Hopefully all our old friends can rest easy now. I heard what you told Nan about Kupka. Blackthorn, could I ask a favour? How would it? It's for mid. This my last chance to say I'm otherwise engaged. Spare myself for your sake. Go on then. What is it this time? She said you would know. Here. you'd want this for but I can make it won't be easy though and I'll need help get Gavin Otto in here will you all right so Mid's roped us all in here again has she typical if that's what it takes to get her to visit Sid's grave, I'll do what I can. And, uh, what is it we need to do, exactly? Take a look at this. It's this plating. The usual saw grade still won't work. We need something that can get very hot, very fast, and still keep its shape. That means an alloy. Something that won't break or buckle at the temperatures she's talking about. Which is where you lot come in. I need materials, and I've got my work cut out already. You'll have to fetch them. Now, there's a special kind of sand I'm after that you can only find out in the Valkroy. Stardust, they call it. As for the rest of the stuff, my usual supply should have it in stock. It just needs buying and bringing back here. Well, we'll get it done quicker if we split up. One of us should probably give you an hand coat in the sand. And the other can go and get the rest from this supplier. Right then. Well, make your minds up who's going where, we can get this over with. Up to you who you take to the desert. I mean, Gav's good in a fight, but... He don't have my winning personality. Ah, don't listen to him. You'll be in the lowest of low company with either of us. Up to you who you take to the desert. I mean, Gav's good. You going after the Stardust then, are you? Which one of these two lucky souls is going with you? Otto, you're with me. All right, then. Where do we find this Stardust, and how will we know it when we see it? There's a river that runs through the southern reaches of the Velcroy. It's the black sand that washes up on its banks that you're after. And I'm guessing you'll be needing sack loads of the stuff. Might be worth our importers and the Dali Milin. I'll head down there. See about finding us a wagon. All right. I'll meet you by the river. You two take care, eh? I'll go and see the supplier. Just don't let that bastard fleece you, eh? Ah, he wouldn't do that. He's Blackthorn's mate. Isn't he? Best the luck. I'll head down to Dalimil, see about hiring us a wagon. Wait for me by the river. I'll head down to Dalimil, see about hiring us a wagon. Wait for me by the river. Don't you worry about me. I can smell a swindle from half the twins away. Don't you worry about me. I can smell... Back are you? The river's down the south end of the Velcroy. Bring back as much stardust as you can carry. The 
seen troops amassing in it before. How are you doing? Anything catch your eye? interest you in today. I trust it's all here. Keep fighting the good fight. If you ever need a room, Sid, just say the word. I'll have a bed. Mate. Good to see you, Sid, as always. Uh, Master Quinton's out back. Hello, Sid. Ah, Clive. Your timing is exquisite, as always. I have a concern which you may be able to assist me with. Go on. There are whisperings afoot of shadowy figures having been sighted outside the village. Rustlings in the undergrowth, suspicious noises. My people fear that they are being watched. It may be no more than a surfeit of nerves, understandable in the current climate, or it may be the prelude to something altogether more dangerous. Given what I hope you'll forgive me calling your nose for trouble, I wondered if you might investigate. Very well. I'm sure you're a busy man. Go. There are, it give of course. Excellent. You might begin by speaking with the good citizens of Lostwing. Listen to their tales, and make what you will of them. All right. I will. My people speak of strange shadows glimpsed in the gloom of the woods. Either these are figments of anxious imaginations, or someone is out there. Someone who does not wish to be seen. My people speak of strange shadows glimpsed in the gloom of the woods. Right. Let's see what the people of the village have to say. I'd better find out if this is just nerves, or something we need to take more seriously. Where it is, the Black Shields took a hand or something. Excuse me. Quinton mentioned strange figures having been sighted near the village. Have you seen anything? Nah, not me, Gov. I heard the rumours, though. I'm here most days, right next to the gate, and I ain't seen nothing out of the ordinary. Don't worry. Any shady characters try and slip into town this way, and I'll soon come running. And shouting, most likely. All right. Thank you. Tell Quintin he don't need to worry about strangers sneaking into this end of town. Oh, I've got my eyes open. Tell Quintin he don't need to worry about strangers sneaking. Have a moment. There's talk of suspicious figures in the woods. Have you seen anything out of the ordinary? No, but I've heard something. Sound of scraping metal, like someone sharpening a sword. Where was this? In Lorbert's Pass. Was out foraging for herbs when I heard it, screeching out from between the trees. Ran back here as quick as my legs would carry me. And I ain't been back since. I see. I'll look into it. Thank you. I was in Lorbert's Pass when I heard it. Sounded like someone wetting a blade. Ready to slit my throat. Put the wind right up me, it did. I was in Lorbert's Pass when I heard it. 
Seems Lorbert's pass is our best bet then. What do you say, Torgal? Shall we go and investigate? I was in Lorbert's pass when I heard it. You there. Fuck! He's seen us. Get them before they escape! Black Shields. Here. What the hell are you doing here? Why were they here? Are they planning an attack on Lost Wing? I need to warn Quentin. Clive, how goes the hunt for our sinister figures? I found some black shields hiding near Lorbert's Pass. They're gone now. Black shields. The Empress's former bloodhounds, though they serve another master now. One who means to root out and destroy both me and those I care for. And it would appear the pack has finally caught the scent of its prey. Damn it all. I had hoped I would have more time than this. More time to prepare. But if we are cornered, we have no choice but to bite back. And bite back we shall. I'm sorry. You're going to need to explain. Who did the Black Shield serve now? And why would that person want you dead? Because I want him dead. Who? The former Lord Chief Justice of Sanbrac. All that I have built here is for him. I don't understand. Why him? Why Lostwing? <sighs> I suppose it is better that you know the truth. I was a member of the judiciary once. So sickened was I by the injustice of this world, I swore to fight it, and fight it I did in my own small way. I saw more than a few corrupt officials condemned to the very cells into which they had thrown blameless innocence, men to whom the law was but a scourge to turn against the powerless. And throughout, it was the Lord Chief Justice who backed me, who was my one true ally in the quest to see justice done. So what changed? I discovered that he hunted bearers for sport. I was a fool to think he shared my hatred of venality and vice. His support for me was no more than a facade, a means of ridding himself of his rivals, a mask to hide the rot beneath. I filed suit against him immediately. 
His response, however, was rather more visceral. He had my entire family slaughtered, and he faced no punishment whatsoever. I lost everything. My loved ones, my livelihood, my position, the faith I had once held that any modicum of justice might be achieved through the courts. So I set about enacting my own. I tracked down every soul who served him and slit their throats myself. But the man himself proved an altogether more difficult target. With money and power come protection. And so I saw that I would need an army of my own. I came here to Lostwing and began recruiting like-minded individuals. And everyone here knows this is why you do what you do. Of course. They too have lost loved ones to the bearer hunts. Seen faultless friends sent to the gallows to spare the guilty. All under the watchful eye of the Lord Chief Justice. Our wounds are the same. And our cause is the same. We are comrades. And our revenge is already in motion. We know where he hides, how numerous and well trained his guard. What we did not know until now, however, was that his plans may already be in motion, too. Quinton. Our time is short. He may move against us at any moment, unless we move against him first. My friends and comrades, it begins. Make ready for war. I take it Drake's Fang was your doing, Sid. Hmm, you really are quite the outlaw. It's only a matter of time before the people learn of this and seek to apportion blame. Lie low is my advice. I take it Drake's Fang was your doing, Sid. Hmm, Sid, Drake's Fang is gone. Oh, Mother Crystal, gone. Yeah. What are we gonna do? You. Calm yourself. Listen. I, I've got this theory. The fallen. I don't think they all fell. Some of them are still living among us. You could be one of them. I could be one of them. Here, yeah. you. Back again, are you? Any more trouble and you'll be barred for life, however deep your friend's pockets might be. Back again, are you? Any more trouble and you'll be barred for life. Hey, that's Lubor's badge. Are you a friend of Lubor's too, mister? He always gives us food when we're hungry and water when we're thirsty. And we don't even have to beg for it. Hey, that's Lubor's badge. Are you a friend of Lubor's? Come, just like that. And without so much as a buy your leave. What's the matter? Uh, oh, it, it's my apprentice. He up and vanished while my back was turned. I'd go and look for him myself, 
But I've got a bakery to run, a bakery that's now short, one pair of hands. Loath though I am to rely on the kindness of strangers, I'm at a loss. Please, will you see if you can find him? Oh, very well. I'll trouble you no further. May fortune find you. God, what's that? I'd... I'll see what I can do. Do you know where he might have gone? Ah, I wouldn't be surprised if he was off somewhere mooning at Drake's Fang. He used to work there, you see. Poor fool left his heart in its hollow. All right. Then that's where I'll start. say I understand that boy's obsession with the fang. I can't say I understand much about him at all. I can't say I understand.
Those who kill for sport deserve no better. of a monster, twice as tall as Titan himself, cracked the fang open like it was a sparrow's egg. I swear, on my grandmother's grave, I saw it myself. A mountain of a monster. Excuse me. What do you want? The baker sent me to find you. I am a sorry, selfish sod, aren't I? I'm certainly not a baker. Master must rue the day he took me in. Time was the sight of the fang used to calm my nerves. But now look at her. I take it you miss the Mother Crystal. I hated her, but she was all I knew. Worked her minds for years. And when she shattered, part of me shattered with her. I had to trade my pickaxe for a rolling pin. But I'm no good at baking. Every loaf I touch collapses. My bread's as hollow as I am. She was the only thing that could fill the hole inside me. Oh, I loved her, damn it. But now she's gone. She's never coming back. What am I supposed to do? I ask her. How does a shell of a man learn to live again? Focus on the job at hand. Think about what you can do right now. What use is proof in Lowe's when... Wait. Perhaps the solution has been in the bakery all along. You've opened my eyes. Thank you, friend, and fare thee well. Wait. Suppose he won't be needing an escort then. The man who lit a fire under my wayward apprentice. <laughs> Though I worry you might have stoked the flames a little too high. He damn near ran me down trying to get to my oven. Master, it's ready. 
Behold the Drake's Balm. A truly unique creation. I dare say it is. <laughs> Just look at it. A perfect likeness of the Fang herself. Her steeple peaks, her fulsome spurs, her inviting hollow. True, my loaves collapse more often than not, but what's the Fang without her crater? Why, no Fang at all. And look, inside. She's filled to bursting with a bounty of beautiful crystals. Salt crystals! Master, I have found my purpose. I must use my work here to preserve the memory of the Fang. Uh, well, if it tastes half as unique as it looks, I'd certainly say you're on to something. <laughs> Uh, not only is my apprentice back, but he's finally pulling his weight. With any luck, I might even have a new delicacy on my hands. I don't know how you did it, but you have my thanks. Now... Dusan, I know you're keen, but do you have to use the good salt? Leave some for the rest of us. Take a so sniff, long. good sir. My carpets have brighter places. Now a hero returns. That was your doing, was it not? As for me... My ears are Master always Limbo open. says Drake's fang has fallen. Does that mean the first? I'll make a master smith of myself someday. And hopefully, make myself useful to Master Lubor someday sooner. I'll make a master smith of myself someday. Looks like I found the river. Now where's Otto? Otto, sorry I'm late. Oh, Clive. I had a quick scout about. And I reckon this area is our best bet. Seems Blackthorn's the only one who thinks smithing with his stardust stuff's a good idea. It's just lying here, waiting for any old fool to fill his boots. But unlike any old fool, you thought to bring a wagon. Well spotted. Now get filling. Plenty of the stuff about. May as well grab what we can, eh? There's plenty of the stuff about. May as well grab what we can.
So this is Stardust. <laughs> it just looks like black sand to me. Should be enough for now. Let's see how Otto's getting on. How much did you get? Enough. I hope. together and I can't see Blackthorn complaining. March. Here, Clyde. Do you fancy a walk? Sid would be proud. Of what? Of you. You idiot. The way you've carried on what he started. When we first met, I had you down as a spoiled little puppy who enjoyed nothing more than biting the hand that fed you. But five years on, you're the one doing the feeding. So thanks for proving me wrong. You weren't wrong. But I changed. Thanks to Sid. And thanks to you. When I suggested taking on his name, you were the first to back me. And if you hadn't, no one else would have. I couldn't have done any of this without you, Otto. Now get over. You're making me blush. All I did was choose hope over despair. I gave you a chance, yes. But you're the one who took it. You took a rabble of homeless, hopeless outcasts and put them back on their feet. Gave them something worth fighting for, just like the old Sid did. About time I was heading back, I reckon. All this scrabbling about in the sands taking its toll on the old pins. I'll see you back at the hideaway then. You can take a well-earned rest when you get there. Oh, I plan to. Believe you me. But I'll make sure Blackthorn gets his precious black sand before I put my feet up. He'll only moan otherwise. Right. Ready to go home, boy? Oh. There you are. Blackthorn's got his precious stardust, in case you were wondering. There you are. How would you lot get on? I brought back all that stuff Blackthorn asked for. How would you lot get on? Blackthorn. Got everything you need. Yeah. Yeah, I do. 
Cheers for the stardust. Should be enough to be getting on with. Nice to get out and about for once. Let's do it again sometime, mate. I'll make a start on putting this firm all plating together, then. It will take some time, mind. So if you've got other things to be getting on with, I could do without you breathing down my neck. Thank you, Blackthorn. I'll let Mid know construction's underway. Suppose we'd better be getting back to work, too. Give us a shout if you need anything. Back, are you? You still here? The plating will be ready when it's ready. All right. I heard what you told Nan about Kupka. It's good to have you back. I was worried. We're seeing troops amassing at every point. Ain't so bad stretching your legs once in a while. Should do it more often. The Drake's breath. Ain't so bad stretching your legs once in a while. Should do it more often. Fancy a look at the list, do you? Here you go. Think you can help? How may I help you today, Clive? Kuka. Oh, but when I close my eyes. Only I don't know how. I wish you were here. Your benefactors are a generous lot. You earned this. All done?
mid might need some help. So. If I don't come up with something soon. You'll be pleased to hear that Blackthorn started work on the plating. Excellent. One down, two to go. So, what's next? The helm, of course. For this, we'll be repurposing fallen scrap. Salvage from the ruins? I thought that material was all but impossible to work. Ah, but we don't have to. I'm sorry? Just so happens there's one particular ruin that's broken into exactly the right shape and size pieces for what we need. What's the name back there? I'll give you all the details. What's the name? Right. Talk to her back there. You know, thingy. She'll tell you exactly which bits of which ruin we need. You just need to go and find him. Talk to her back there, you know, thingy. She'll tell you... Oh, Sid, is this about the helm? Uh, yes. Mid said I should speak with you. I'll show you the plans, then. Here you see the Mithril engine, in which Mithril is burned to generate heat. That heat is then harnessed to produce motive force. Excess heat is dealt with by means of the thermal displacement stack, which disperses it into the surrounding air. Now, were we to rely on thermal plating alone to achieve this effect, the rate of excess heat buildup would far exceed the displacement coefficient of the plating. In other words, the reactor would overheat and eventually explode. This is where the helm comes in. It connects to the plating, you see, and serves as a sort of thermal sink to absorb all that excess energy. Our experiments have shown that fallen ceramics are remarkably thermophilic. They can withstand and absorb levels of heat far above anything we are able to make today. And not only that, they're also waterproof and immune to rust, making them the perfect material for our protective hood. Why, if sea or rainwater were to enter the reactor proper, it would vaporize instantly. The forces produced would tear the ship from stern to... You can stop there. I understand. Mid said we might be able to use parts of a fallen ruin. Where would I find it? Ah, yes. It's in Lorbert's Pass, near Lostwing. The thing is, well, I probably should have arranged to have the pieces we need brought here sooner. You see, a certain... Unwanted visitor has taken up residence there. It's no longer a matter of just walking in and taking them. It's, um, going to be considerably more dangerous than that. I see. Then I suppose I'd better deal with this unwanted visitor for you. Would that help? Oh, very much. Thank you, Sid. I'll gather my team and head there right away. We'll meet you outside the ruins. <laughs> 